far as it's known, Donald Hay was the first European to view the head of the, the lake in Upper Wakatup country. He came into the northern arm of Lake Wakatup in the winter of 1859 in a Mary Moki. He was followed the following year, Reese, William Reese and Nicholas von Tunzeman gazed in the same land from what is now known as White Point, at the, just at the bend of the lake. Reese was so impressed with the land that on his return to Dunedin, he applied for a lease of it on behalf of himself and his two partners, Gammy and Grant, who resided in England. The, <coughs> the lease was granted, and, but, but one of the conditions prevailing in those days with new leases was it had to be stopped within a certain time or the lease would be cancelled. Reese went and bought sheep ramp and assembled them at Coal Creek Station in the Shag Valley, which belonged to Johnny Jones. And in December of 1860, they, they left to drive the sheep to the water. The account of that drive is recorded in a book written by Alfred Duncan, who was on the drive, and who, the book called The Wakatipians. Later, Duncan worked with Reese on the North Station, as he called his property, and then returned to England, to Scotland, where he wrote the book later. The North Station that Reese supplied for started at Simpson's or 25 Mile Creek and ran directly north to the Trail Mile of Roxburgh Creek, and then in a straight line to the Narrows and the Dart River, and back down the Dart to the lake. The sheep, were, after having been driven to the Wakata, were rested for some time, and then driven on to this new country, this north station that Reese now had. On arrival at the head of the lake, they were turned over the stream onto a grassy flat, the, uh, over the stream called the Buckleburn, which Duncan called the Buckleburn, and some of those engaged the drive went away and left, leaving Alfred Duncan and George Simpson to look after the sheep. Their names are remembered in the area by Mount Alfred and Simpson's Creek. They were both, yeah, they were only 18 years of age. I can see of one of Reese's partners in the mid 1860s. The north run was put up for sale and bought by Buchman Brothers and with the 500 sheep that were running on it. The John Buchman very soon brought out his brother and became the, the sole owner of the property. He enlarged his holding by taking up the lease of Earn's Law, which had never been, for the first time, had been applied for, and also taking up the Reese country. A man named Briggs had been running stock in the, in the Reese on a very temporary license. And about 1874, he decided he wouldn't bother anymore. And Butman got a more permanent lease of the country. While Butman was occupying most of the area east of the Dart River, he also held the Rootburn run for a period on the west side of the Dart. Birchdale, more commonly known as the Greenstone, was taken up by John von Tunzman and a partner. And at some period, Elfin Bay was cut off Fernhill, and Henry Elliot took up the lease. This then was a picture of the early run holding in the area. In the early 1880s, there was agitation for much of the lower country held by Buton to be surveyed out and cut up for closer settlement. This was done, and settlers took up and farmed some of it, but Buchman managed to find a fair acreage by freehold. In 1887, Buchman abandoned all the holdings owing to the continued low wool prices and the growth of the rabbit infestation. The London Mercantile Company, who had helped finance him, took over the freehold land, which mainly consisted of the Earnslow Flats. The high country runs were taken up by various owners. The land between Shepherd's Hut Creek and Simpson's Creek by Stuart Duke, which is afterward joined onto Mount Crichton. The Buffalburn 
run by Mrs. Coomer for a very short period and then brought out by Waller. The precipice, Reese Valley and Earns Law leases obtained by, were obtained by W.H. Valpy Sr. and Jr. and his son-in-law Oakton. And Temple Peak was taken up by George Fulton, who was a relation of the Valpies. Ralford, which had various short-term owners, was later taken up by Andrew Fraser, who continued to own it for a number of years. In 1894, the Valpies abandoned their holdings. The precipice was taken up by Sandy McKenzie, Reese Valley by James Dunnery, and Ernest Law by Frank McBride, who also bought the fat lands run by the Loner Mercantile Company. Over the years, there's been many changes of ownership of the runs in the area, but the areas have stayed substantially the same. The Alfred Run is now part of Earns Law, and the two, lead, the two runs, Precipice and Buckleburn, were joined together and have been run for many years as Wyuna. The Upper Walker Country has always been known as good grazing land and producing good fine wool, and some of the runs in the area have topped and eaten sales, wool sales and occasions with their good wool. One run and the Upper Wapita held the New Zealand record price for Marina Wool for a time. Transport supplied the late steamers, brought in the goods required, and took out the produce till the coming of the road in 1962. For nearly a hundred years, settlers in the area were dependent on the Lake Wapita steamers, and those who lived in the Upper Wapita region in that period appreciated the good service given in all sorts of weather. <laughs>